You too. What's up? It's your boy Anthem Barber coming back at you with another haircut tutorial. In this video, we're going to be doing a crop top. So, before any cut, I like to begin by brushing or combing out my client's hair. Shout out to Still Too Comb for this dope comb that you see me using. And the reason why I like to brush or comb out my client's hair is I just like to get everything to lay in its natural direction. That way it's easier to cut. Alright, so now that I got his hair all combed out and everything laying in its natural direction, I'm going to take my wall number 8 premium guard with the lever closed and I'm going to begin to just knock off bulk. I'm going to knock off all that weight on top and this is going to be the desired length for my client. He's ready for a change, spring's here, the sun's out. He's ready to just break away from this long hair. Trust me when I tell you he absolutely hated it. This happens to be my son and, and we were all growing our hair out together and we made kind of a pact. And so the only way that I would agree for him to be able to cut his hair was if he let me film this cut. When I tell you this kid hates being on camera, he absolutely hates being on camera. So right here you're going to notice that I keep my comb handy on me at all times. And that's because once I started cutting his hair, his hair was used to laying in one direction. So you're going to notice that I comb it down. I swipe it with the clipper, comb it down, swipe it with the clipper. And I'm just doing that to ensure that I give him an overall even cut. Because like I said, his hair was used to laying in a direction and now I'm trying to get it all to lay naturally how it should have without that slick back man bun style he had. All right, so now we're gonna get into the blend portion of his cut. And I say blend, because it's more of a soft blend that I'm gonna give them. I'm coming in with my wall magic clip with the lever open and I'm gonna set my initial guide. I'm not gonna bald him out. He doesn't like being skinned out. Um, and so I decided to go ahead and come in with my lever open to just kind of set the foundation so that you can see somewhat of a transition in this blend I'm about to give them. Again, I'm calling it a blend, not a fade. To me, uh, uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess it would be a fade, but I consider a fade more like skin, you know, something more visually popping when it comes to the blend. When, when it's something like this and it's more subtle and more soft, I just feel like it's a blend. But nevertheless, I'm still going to try to deliver them a really dope cut. I'm going to try to add um, somewhat of a transition from the blend right here on the bottom towards the top of the hair when it gets in the length. So now that I set my first initial guideline, he does have somewhat like of a longer um, sideburn area. Again, he doesn't like to be skinned out, but I went ahead and talked him in to let me taper out these sides. So all I did was I came in with my lever closed and now I'm working in the taper, just opening my lever little by little as I go up. And if you remember, the first initial guide that I set was with the lever open. So all I'm naturally doing is blending from the lever closed into that open where we just left off. So I know that taper was pretty soft, but clearly you could see now that removing that sideburn area gave it a way better look. So now I'm going to come in with my Elevate Pro number one guard with the lever open and I'm going to begin to set my next guideline and I'm going to give myself the same amount of space that I just gave myself with the previous guide so I could keep everything consistent with this cut. So right here I just wanted to show you guys that I accidentally took his guide a little too high right there. And so it just goes to show you that we're all human, we all make mistakes, but I'm not going to let it worry me. I'm going to continue to trust the process and work my way through. So once I set in that initial guideline with the lever open, now you see me, I'm closing my lever and I'm going to begin to blend from the bottom of that guide right up towards the top of that guide where I just left off with the lever open. Typically the one leaves somewhat of weight left behind, 
So I'm gonna go ahead and come back and clean that up a little bit and I'm gonna show you how as soon as we finish up. So here it is, I'm gonna come in with my Elevate Pro 0.5, so the half guard with the lever open, and right where I just showed you is the weight that I'm noticing. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna begin to attack that weight right above where it is. So I'm gonna come in with my lever open and I'm gonna begin to attack it. And I'm gonna use the fade process, but this time I'm gonna close my lever as needed and I'm gonna fade down. And I'm gonna continue to close my lever until that guide's completely blended out. All right, so now that I got that cleaned up, I'm gonna come in with my Elevate Pro 1.5, so the one and a half guard, and I'm gonna use that little flick out motion that I just showed you when I get towards the top of the weight of his hair. But I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna begin to set my next guideline, and I'm gonna continue to give myself about the same amount of space that I just gave myself with the two previous guides, because again, I'm trying to keep everything consistent. So once I set in that initial guide, just like both the previous guides, I'm now gonna close my lever, and I'm gonna begin to blend from the bottom of that guide right back up towards the top of that guide where I just left off with the lever fully open. So now what you're gonna see me do is a little bit of detail work. And the way I'm gonna do my detail work is I'm gonna come in with the lever fully open with my Elevate Pro one guard, and I'm gonna begin to fade, but I'm gonna do the fade down process again. So I'm gonna close my lever as needed, and I'm just gonna continue to work out those dark spots. You're gonna see me go from the one guard into the half guard, cause again, I'm just kinda detailing everything. And when I tell you this kid's hair is extremely hard to blend, I don't know what it is about his hair, but it is so hard to blend. So truthfully, this is a actually cleaner look for him as far as the length and, and the, the, the blend that he chose because his hair is so hard to blend out when we do like a skin fade or something like that. So, you know, he actually has the right idea. He's 15 now, he knows what he likes. And overall, I, I think this cut's super dope. And you're gonna see it in the end and, and you'll go ahead and be able to to make that decision yourself whether you feel like this cut is super fire like i do i think it was a really dope transformation and if y'all think so too make sure you smash that like button and why i got your ear for a minute i just want to say shout out to tito beats for this dope fire you hear in your ears and this just this dope vibe that his beats set off in these tutorials so right here you're gonna see that i'm taking my um and his t outliner and i'm beginning to line him up and i actually i'm gonna show you both sides of the lineup and i'm using two different machines i wanted you to see that in my opinion nothing hits harder than this corded t outliner i have the cordless t outliner i got almost every trimmer other than like the bezel or whatever the bevel and and nothing hits like this corded T outliner. I mean, if you could clearly, you could clearly see right here in front of you that the lines are sharp. And again, I never push anything back because I want that line to remain sharp until his hair starts to really, really grow back. Not in a day or two when I when I push the line so sharp that stubble's growing in in a day or two. I'm not with that. So you could see that I keep everything very natural but consistent. So right here I'm using the wall retros and these like they hit they hit in the lineup area. But for some reason I feel like they're weak sauce when it comes to the neck lineup. You guys let me know in the comment section below right now. You just saw the difference between the two. Which one do you feel 
like it's hitting cleaner. So now that we got all that out the way, I'm going to begin to prep his front lineup. And what I mean by that is I'm going to apply some spritz right here. And I'm just going to kind of lock in his, his fringe area, his bang area, the front of his hair, if you will. So you're going to see me apply the spritz and then I'm just going to comb everything down because I'm going to give him a lineup here in a minute. And uh, before I hit his lineup, why I let that spritz dry I'm gonna jump in to giving him some texture on top you might have seen me do this in my last video again this is called slithering um, some call it th th uh, sloping or I don't know there's all kinds of names for it so basically this is how I like to put texture inside my clients hair it's a really simple technique it's really hard to mess up and, and really jack your client up so if you haven't tried it go ahead and try it it gives a really dope look and typically when I give my clients a texture look when I show the final style it never complements the texture but this time this time it's gonna be different I'm gonna style this client out so you could go ahead and see the look that the texture actually gives the client when you use this technique right here so all I'm doing is I'm coming in with my shears and I'm, I'm, I'm slightly closing them almost all the way and then I'm slithering them across the hair and what I mean by slithering just like you see me doing right now I'm just working and gliding my way through the hair and as you do that you're gonna feel the hair cut and if the if the shears get stuck on you at all you're gonna go ahead and just open and close them a little bit like you would if you were cutting and you're gonna continue to slither you're gonna continue to guide down the hair so right here you're seeing that I'm doing his lineup and what I mean by lineup is I'm not giving him like a sharp boxy look I'm actually lining up his bang or I'm lining up his fringe area I'm not pushing it back it's left actually long I have the spritz in it so it'll hold it tight so I could give him a sharp look so when he does style out for the cut that I gave him it complements everything really well again this isn't a typical lineup because if it were I'd be going up like a whole nother finger to where his natural lineup would be this is uh, some overhang and I'm just trying to clean it up again for the dope style that I'm getting ready to give him All right, so now that I got everything looking basically how I want it, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna apply some water in the hair and I'm gonna get ready to comb everything out. And you can see that the hair naturally sets nicely on top, but I feel like there's a little bit of weight and I wanna, I wanna connect that blend to the top a little bit more. So I'm wetting the hair and then I'm combing it out and I'm, I'm overlaying it right now on the ridge of his head. And the reason why I'm doing that again is because I want this blend to, to smoothly transition into the top of the hair. So I'm gonna knock off, not a whole lot, but some weight to just really ensure that if he doesn't product up or he just wants to be uh, really messy, that it still looks clean. So right here you see I come in with my wall magic clip with my lever open and I'm using my clipper and you see I'm applying the comb directly to his head. And then I'm just I'm, I'm angling my comb straight up I'm not I'm not angling it in so I give them that rounded off look I'm just going straight up with it because I'm trying to keep somewhat of a boxy look to his cut I'm not trying to round it off if that makes any sense All 
All right, so clearly you can see the hair is dry now. So obviously I didn't film me blow drying it, but I did blow dry it and it only took about a minute. So I just, I, I felt like it wasn't something that I needed to share. But this, uh, this product that I'm applying right here, it it's best if you apply it on dry hair. So that's exactly what I did. I blow dried it and then I applied the product. It's a powder play. And here you see the final cut, y'all. I think that's fire. I think that's such a clean, dope look. If you remember what he looked like in the beginning of this video, and, and you see what he looks like now, this is a whole new person. If you got anything useful out this, I ask that you smash that like button. If you're new to my channel, I suggest you stick around. It's only gonna get doper from here. I appreciate y'all. Be blessed. Be a blessing. I'm out.